it was never supposed to last this long. In 1977, engineers gave it a handful of years, just enough time to sweep past Jupiter and Saturn before fading into silence. But Voyager 2 had other plans. Nearly half a century later, this silent messenger has not only crossed into interstellar space, it has just sent back its last pictures. And what those images reveal is nothing short of breathtaking. Picture this, a spacecraft no larger than a small car, gliding through a realm no human eyes will ever see in person. It doesn't look like much, an old machine with golden plates and spindly antennae. Yet Voyager 2 carries humanity's fingerprints, our hopes, our voice etched into a golden record, and our technology stretched to its limits. Launched on August 20th, 1977, Voyager 2 was the first of the twin probes to begin its journey. It was humanity's bold attempt to seize a rare alignment of planets, an opportunity that comes only once every 176 years. The idea was simple yet audacious, use the gravity of one giant planet to sling the spacecraft toward the next, like a cosmic slingshot. Voyager 2 would become our eyes, our reporter, our ghostly traveler at the edge of forever. As decades passed, the spacecraft traveled billions of miles from Earth. Unlike satellites that orbit close by, Voyager was set free, untethered, unprotected, venturing into a dark ocean where even sunlight is just a faint whisper. Every day, the signals it sends take over 18 hours to reach us. Think about that, a radio whisper traveling at the speed of light, crossing the endless black just to deliver its final images home. And those final images? They don't just show planets or moons. They reveal the edge of everything we know. They are windows into a space where no human spacecraft has ever gone before, a place where the sun's protective bubble fades and the raw forces of interstellar space press against our fragile machine. Voyager 2's last pictures aren't just photographs. They're history. They're proof that we dared to look beyond our cradle, to stretch our vision further than anyone thought possible. But before we explore those shocking images, we need to remember the journey that carried Voyager 2 here, the path that carved its place as the greatest explorer humanity has ever launched. Because those last pictures? They weren't taken in the familiar worlds of our solar system. They were captured at the edge of the unknown, where the sun ends and the galaxy begins. When Voyager 2 first left Earth in 1977, it carried with it a set of commands typed into computers far less powerful than the phone in your pocket. Its mission was bold but straightforward, fly past Jupiter and Saturn, take some pictures, collect data, and report back home before its instruments failed. That alone would have been enough to cement it in history. But Voyager 2 wasn't finished. Thanks to flawless engineering and a bit of cosmic luck, it became the only spacecraft in existence to visit all four of the giant planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Each encounter rewrote textbooks and stunned scientists. At Jupiter in 1979, Voyager 2 sent back images that made the world gasp. It revealed a planet alive with storms, colors, and lightning bolts bigger than Earth itself. But the real shock came from its moons. Io, once thought to be a frozen rock, was alive with volcanoes, erupting so violently that plumes rose hundreds of miles above its surface. Ganymede and Europa whispered hints of underground oceans. For the first time, humanity saw not dead rocks, but dynamic worlds with secrets waiting to be uncovered. Next came Saturn in 1981. Voyager 2 revealed the rings in unimaginable detail, delicate, braided structures, shepherd moans guiding cosmic dust like choreographed dancers. It showed Titan cloaked in a thick, orange atmosphere, a world so mysterious that scientists couldn't resist returning decades later with the Cassini mission. Saturn's system, once elegant and simple from a telescope, became a theater of complexity under Voyager's gaze. But Voyager 2 wasn't done breaking barriers. In 1986, it achieved another first, a flyby of Uranus. What it found shocked even the mission team. Uranus was tilted sideways, spinning like a barrel, its magnetic field twisted and bizarre. Its rings were dark, its moons scarred and strange, with landscapes scientists had never imagined. For the first time, we realized how weird a planet could be, and how little we truly understood. Finally, in 1989, Voyager 2 reached Neptune. 
The images it returned were stunning, a cobalt blue world with winds faster than a Category 5 hurricane on Earth. Its moon triton stunned scientists even more, geysers of icy nitrogen erupting from its frozen surface, hinting at energy deep inside a world colder than almost any other. By the time Voyager 2 left Neptune behind, it had shown humanity sights no one thought possible. It had turned distant dots of light into living worlds, each one stranger than the last. The probe was never supposed to survive this long, but it did, and as it sailed past Neptune into the unknown, scientists realized something extraordinary, Voyager 2 was still alive, still listening, still willing to carry humanity's story into the great dark. And that's when its mission changed forever. Voyager 2 wasn't just a planetary explorer anymore. It was about to leave the solar system itself and become humanity's first true interstellar traveler. Imagine a ship sailing so far from home that the stars themselves look unchanged, yet the ocean beneath it has disappeared. That's what happened to Voyager 2 as it drifted past Neptune and pressed into the outermost frontier of our solar system. Beyond lay a border invisible to the eye, but critical to our survival, the edge of the sun's protective bubble, known as the heliosphere. For billions of years, our star has shielded Earth and its neighbors with a constant flow of charged particles, the solar wind. It pushes outward, creating a bubble that protects us from the harsher, deadlier radiation of interstellar space. Every comet, asteroid, and planet we've studied so far has lived inside that bubble. But Voyager 2 was about to leave it behind. The crossing was not sudden. For years, its instruments detected strange fluctuations, cosmic rays increasing, solar particles thinning. Scientists watched nervously as the probe crept closer to the heliopause, the invisible boundary where the sun's influence fades and the galaxy begins. On November 5, 2018, it finally happened. Voyager 2 crossed into interstellar space. The signal it sent back was faint, traveling over 11 billion miles before reaching Earth. But the data was undeniable, the density of plasma around the spacecraft had changed, the solar wind had vanished, and Voyager was now adrift in the vast ocean between stars. This was history. Voyager 1 had technically crossed first, in 2012, but Voyager 2 carried more working instruments, giving us a fuller picture of what lay beyond. For the first time, we could measure the true conditions of interstellar space, not theory, not guesswork, but raw data sent home by a machine we built with 1970s technology. Think about that for a moment. A spacecraft launched before the internet, before smartphones, before most of today's scientists were even born, had just reported back from the galaxy itself. Humanity was now, officially, an interstellar species. But with this triumph came a growing sense of fragility. Every signal from Voyager 2 had to cross a staggering gulf, taking nearly 17 hours to reach Earth at the speed of light. Its power source, a nuclear battery, was slowly dying. Engineers began shutting down instruments one by one, stretching its life as long as possible. And yet, against all odds, it still managed to send pictures, its last images, captured as it drifted beyond the sun's reach. Those pictures were never supposed to exist. By the time Voyager 2 reached interstellar space, its camera system was nearly dormant. Yet NASA coaxed out one final set of images, shadows and faint lights from the edge of forever. What those last photos revealed left even hardened scientists stunned. Because the universe Voyager 2 revealed wasn't the quiet, empty void we once imagined. Its last pictures hinted at something far more mysterious, something waiting for us in the dark between the stars. Voyager 2 was never designed to be an artist. Its cameras were built for science, meant to measure and record. Yet in its final years, as its systems weakened and its mission shifted from exploration to survival, Voyager became something else entirely, a silent painter in the dark. The last images it captured weren't just data, they were poetry carved in light. One of those final images was of the pale blue, Earth itself, seen from billions of miles away. To the naked eye, it was almost nothing, a speck smaller than a pixel. But to Carl Sagan, who later immortalized it, that speck was everything, every human being who ever was, lived out their lives on that mode of dust suspended in a sunbeam. Voyager gave us that view, forcing us to see ourselves not as rulers of a planet, 
but as fragile travelers in an endless sea. But Voyager 2's last pictures weren't only of Earth. They included the fading outlines of Neptune and Uranus, rendered in ghostly blues and greens. The spacecraft caught the strange shadows of Neptune's clouds, racing faster than any storm on Earth, and the faint arcs of its dark rings, delicate structures barely visible even up close. Uranus appeared tilted, strange, almost alien, its pale glow hinting at mysteries scientists still haven't solved. And then there were the deep space calibration shots, images Voyager 2 took as it turned its camera toward the blackness between the stars. What should have been nothing but empty dark revealed instead faint streaks of light, scattered like whispers across the void. To some, they were cosmic rays hitting the detector. To others, they looked eerily like distant galaxies bleeding through the black. But one thing was certain, they were unlike anything Voyager had sent before. At NASA, these images carried a weight beyond science. Engineers knew they were looking at the last photographs Voyager would ever take. Every frame felt like a farewell, a final glance backward before the probe vanished into silence. For some, it was emotional. This was the spacecraft they had designed, built, and commanded for decades. Now it was slipping away, leaving behind a handful of images as its final gift to Earth. The public, too, reacted with awe. To many, the last pictures weren't about planets or galaxies, they were about perspective. About a machine that had traveled farther than anyone ever dreamed, showing us how small we are, and yet how bold. Voyager's fading images captured not only the cosmos, but humanity's place within it. And yet, even as Voyager 2's cameras went dark, its mission wasn't over. Because what it represents, the legacy it carries, and the questions it raises, may be more important than the images themselves. Voyager 2 is no longer just a machine. It's a story, a message in a bottle cast into the cosmic sea. Its cameras may be silent, its instruments slowly shutting down, but its journey continues. Even now, decades after leaving Earth, Voyager 2 sails deeper into interstellar space, carrying with it not just scientific data, but a piece of who we are. On board lies the Golden Record, a time capsule etched with sounds, music, greetings, and images of Earth. It holds whispers of our languages, Beethoven and Chuck Berry, greetings in 55 tongues, and the laughter of children. It's not meant for us, it's meant for whoever, or whatever, may one day find it. The idea was simple but profound, if an alien intelligence ever intercepts Voyager, it will know that humanity once lived here, that we dared to dream beyond our home. But perhaps Voyager's true legacy isn't what it carries, it's what it teaches us about ourselves. Its last pictures, faint and grainy as they are, remind us that our planet is fragile, our existence brief, and yet our reach is astonishing. From a single world orbiting a modest star, we built a machine that outlived generations and now travels where no living thing has gone. That alone is staggering. For scientists, Voyager 2 is a proof of concept that we can build machines to last beyond lifetimes, that exploration doesn't end at the edge of our solar system. For dreamers, it's a spark of imagination. If a probe built in the 1970s can travel between the stars, what might we build tomorrow? Nuclear-powered starships? Light sails pushed by lasers? Generation ships carrying humans themselves? And for all of us, Voyager is a mirror. Its pale blue dot image forced us to see Earth not as a collection of nations, borders, and conflicts, but as a single fragile home. Its final journey shows us that exploration is not a luxury, it's our destiny. Humanity has always looked to the horizon, and Voyager proves that our horizon has no end. In the coming decades, Voyager 2 will drift silently onward, its power eventually fading, its voice lost to distance. But its path is eternal. It will orbit the galaxy for billions of years, long after Earth itself is gone, carrying the story of humanity into the endless night. And maybe, just maybe, someday, far away, another intelligence will find it. They will see the golden record, hear our music, our voices, our laughter. And they will know that once, a small civilization on a pale blue dot looked up at the stars and dared to say, we were here, Voyager 2's shocking last pictures weren't just the end of a mission. 
they were the beginning of a legacy, a reminder that even the smallest sparks of curiosity can light a path across the universe.